How's it going everyone? ND Sean 45 coming at you. As you guys can tell, I'm still on the webcam, but the replacement battery for the video camera is on the way. But you know something? It doesn't matter what I film from. The fact is, the 2014 college football season is officially underway, and we are less than 48 hours away from Notre Dame football 2014. I'm excited, and with that said, let's get back to business. Let's get right into it. As all of us Irish fans know, we open up the 2014 campaign against the Rice Owls. Now, the last time these two teams met, it was in Notre Dame Stadium back in 1988, and the Irish came away with that victory pretty handily by the score of 54-11. to uh, The Irish and the Owls have met a total of four times, and the Irish have won all four meetings. Now, i got to give the Owls a lot of credit here, because last year they had a great season. They went 10-4. and four, won the Conference USA Championship, um, and so they're, uh, you know, my hat's off to Coach Bailiff. He did one heck of a job with that team. But this year, things are drastically different. Over half of that Owls team is gone to either graduation or the NFL, and so there's going to be a lot of new faces for that team showing up and coming in there, and I, needless to say, they're going to be rebuilding. However, they do have some playmakers coming back, and by no means is, is this a team to overlook. Because right now people are calling this a, a warm-up for next week's game against Michigan. Well, that's not true. you got to take every game seriously. You can't overlook anyone, especially in our case. I mean, we Irish fans have learned that the hard way with, uh, you know, the two obvious examples that come to mind are Tulsa and South Florida. We kind of did that with them, and uh, it came back to hurt us. We ended up losing both of those games. So you can't overlook anybody. And like I said, with the playmakers that Rice does have coming back, these are these are guys that can uh, do a lot of damage. Now, those playmakers for Rice, in my opinion, hands down, uh, wide receiver Jordan Taylor. Uh, this is a guy who I think will see some time at the NFL level. Um, he can cause matchup problems just with his height alone. He stands at six foot five. Uh, great hands, great uh, leaping ability, need I say more. Another key playmaker is quarterback Dreyfus Jackson. Talented scrambling quarterback. If he gets to the outside and in the open field, he will make you pay. Um, and defensive lineman, I believe he plays end, but I could be wrong. Um, uh, but I'm pretty sure I saw that he, he's a defensive end. Connor Covington. Uh, this is a guy who wrecked havoc all season long last year. Very talented defensive lineman. Um, got in there, made plays, pl uh, plugs up the holes very well. Um, but uh, I'll get to that in a second with uh, my breakdown of that. So those are three guys right there for Rice that can really make a big difference. Now with Jordan Taylor, I've heard some reports that uh, he may not play in the opener um, just because of a, a injury that he's battling and dealing with. And uh, Coach Bailiff has gone on record saying that if he feels any pain, then they're not going to play him. But uh, so far, I haven't heard any report at this point in time that says that Taylor won't play. So I think it's safe to say that he will. Um, unless there's a last-minute decision made, I think he will play. Because uh, you just know Rice has had this game circled on their calendar for a long time now. Um, but uh, anyway, just uh, you know, breaking this game down. Um, and... This being my sixth, sixth season of uh, you know, doing uh, Notre Dame football videos here on YouTube, those of you who are longtime viewers that have been watching me from pretty much day one, going back to the old channel, you guys know that I'm never going to pick Notre Dame to lose. They're my team, and I'm sticking with them all the way. And honestly, if you pick your team to lose, then what kind of fan are you? I mean, that's not, that's not a true fan in my book. See, I am a Notre Dame fan first and a quote-unquote analyst second. Uh, so I'm probably the exact definition of a homer, but I like to think that I'm at least somewhat reasonable. You know, give me some credit. Um, but uh, even if I was a neutral fan who was not a fan of either one of these teams, I still would pick Notre Dame to win this game pretty big, and I think I honestly do think they will. But anyway, keys to victory for Notre Dame. Starting offensively, um, Everett Golson getting him comfortable. Um, you have to establish a run game. I mean, just basic football fundamentals. You establish the run game, you open up the rest of the playbook. And with the, the running back core that we have, uh, the three-headed monster with uh, Cam McDaniel and Torian Folston and Greg Bryant, 
Um, I expect all three of these guys to have big years. We've seen what these guys can do. Now, Bryant, obviously, you know, he sat out uh, all, all of last year with an injury, was limited to only 15 carries, so we couldn't really see what he could do. But in that spring game, we saw flashes of what he can do. And uh, you just know he's hungry. He's ready to get out there and show everybody what he can do, and I think he'll do that. I think all three of these guys will have a big year. So establishing the run game in this one should not be a problem for us. And with that monstrous offensive line that we have to run behind, need I say more? Brian Kelly and his staff have done a great job bringing in offensive line units to uh, to make this offense happen. Um, so establish a run game. Number two, and this is something that we've learned from game, uh, certain games in recent years, protect the football. Turnovers have killed us in the past, and they will continue to do so if we keep committing them. So protect that football with your life. I mean, that's, uh, again, football 101. Uh, receiving core, um, even with uh, the, the academic investigation going on, which um, from rumors that I'm hearing, it has been completed, and we're just waiting on word. I don't know if that's true or not, you know, because rumors are exactly that, rumors. Um, even if with, without DeVaris Daniel in there, I still think we have a great, talented group of wide receivers with guys like uh, Corey Robinson and um, Will Fuller, uh, Chris Brown, um, tight end Ben Koyak. So we should be fine. Um, defensively, this is where things concern me a little bit, and I said this already in, in the season preview video, but defense with, uh, you know, they're transitioning the, into Brian Van Gorder's 4-3 defensive scheme. And uh, his personal attack is, uh, you know, blitz, 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 and, you know, forcing a lot of one-on-one uh, -on -one coverage in the secondary. So it, I can't really judge him fairly because I haven't seen him yet. But defensively, um, very simply put, everyone has to be playing to – everyone has to be completing their assignments, playing efficiently, and most importantly, keep everything in front. Can't give up the big play here. Um, as I said earlier um, – Jordan Taylor, wide receiver for the right for the Rice Owls, he can make he can cause a lot of uh, matchup problems with his height alone. He is a very talented wide receiver, so all of our defensive backs who cover him got to stick to him like glue. Can't let him out of your sight, or he will make you pay. Defensive line, uh, another big key here, and this is just like on offense with establishing the run game. We got to get a pass rush on Dreyfus Jackson. You know, bread and butter right there. Uh, you get you get an effective pass rush, that makes things a lot easier for the secondary. Well, maybe not easier, but it takes a lot off their workload. Um, keep them in the pocket, force them to, you know, force them to throw the ball, for, keep them off balance, make mistakes. Um, really, that's all that can be said there. So with this uh, this new look defense and uh, you know guys transitioning into you know different roles and whatnot, and even with uh, you know, got loot missing guys like Kavari Russell and uh, Eshaq Williams, which that does concern me a little bit. I'm not going to lie about that. And now I guess uh, Elliot Hardy has just been uh, added to the group as well. So that's five guys in total that we will be out with uh, on Saturday, four of them being on defense. So that, that part worries me a little bit. But as young as this group uh, on defense is, and as uh, even though they haven't uh, – you know, seen a lot of playing time. They are very athletic. You know, Brian Kelly's even said that himself. Um, I really, I really think they'll be up for the challenge. Um, now, I, I know everyone expects me to say that because, um, because I'm a Notre Dame fan, and I'm, you know, well, a Notre Dame fan first, uh, analyst second. Uh, but you know, you got to give them, you got to give them the benefit of the doubt. They could, they could surprise all of us. I mean, I. I but the thing is, I just I, you, you can't be surprised if uh, mistakes do happen on Saturday, and I'm sure they will. That's just how it is with the, when you're in a transitional period and learning the new scheme. So mistakes will happen. So with all that said, guys, um, with everything that I've just mentioned coming into play here, um, I still think Notre Dame will win this game pretty big. Um, and uh, honestly, in my personal opinion, I'd like to see us put up 50 points, and I think we have the capability to do that. Um, so with everything that everything said and uh, everything uh, factored in here, I see the final score of this game being Notre Dame 52, Rice 20. We are going to give up a decent chunk of points. Uh, that's, you know, that's what I expect to happen. Could be different. 
quite possible. But at this point, that's how I see things going down. Um, so that's really all I have for you guys as far as a preview goes. But on a special note, uh, one of my longtime viewers who uses the uh, screen name Tony Stark, um, def definite iron, definitely an Iron Man <laughs> reference there, um, he left me a comment earlier saying, uh, Sean, if you go into that stadium on Saturday, since you are going to be there, which I am, I'm going to last minute decided to go to the game, um, get loud. Don't be one of those old people in there that tell you to sit down, be quiet. Damn right. I am. There's no way you're going to silence me. I'm going to get loud when I have to, and uh, I'm going to be loud the whole game. I mean, this is not a damn golf tournament, people. And I say this to all Notre Dame fans who happen to catch this video. Get loud in that stadium if you're, go if you're going inside. Get loud. It's not golf. It's football. Make some noise. Make it uncomfortable for our opponent. I mean, so many people come out of uh, Notre Dame Stadium saying, oh, what a great experience. It's not supposed to be. It's supposed to be hostile for them. Let's make it hostile on them. So all you older people who are in there, get, muster up whatever strength you have left in, in those lungs of yours and yell. Make some noise. <laughs> so there you go, Tony. I addressed it. I gave you your shout out. Uh, so enjoy that, man. I, I, I told you I was going to give you a shout out. Well, I always follow through on my promises. So with that, guys, that's all I have for you in this video. Um, I will tr when I'm at the game on Saturday, I'll try to get some highlights, include those with my recap. So until the recap, um, that's it for now. So with all that said, this is ND Sean 45 signing off. Go Irish!